very gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, the 28th verse, beginning at the 28th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to Christ, Christ, our Savior. Savior. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled about the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the gods shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message to you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. My brothers and sisters, this is the gospel of Christ. Praise Christ, Christ our Lord. of the Most High and Living God, we pray that God will calm all of our fears and speak to us in the silence and the quietude of our lives. Amen. I want to share uh, some words with you, and perhaps to be able to horn in. I will consider the verse which comes to us from the Gospel reading for today. The first part of the first verse 
and the 28th chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew. This is what the writer recalls. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake. I want to share a snippet of part of my family history, which took place almost 34 years ago. So I want you to consider the 24th day of April in the year 1987. Sometime during the course of that day, I rushed my sister to the hospital. She was about to have her second child. Her name would be Shani, she would be my, my niece of course. But I remember distinctly on that night after she had given birth about shortly after 12 o'clock. I went into the room where that little tiny baby was laying in an incubator. And I spoke. I can't remember what I said. But as I spoke, her eyes opened up, and she just lit up. Like somehow or the other, she recognized my voice. Now, we never met before, you understand. And that voice was the beginning of an endless relationship up to now in our lives. Now, I want you to hold on to that. And then I need you to consider this, my brothers and sisters. I need you to consider my theme for today. And that theme is this. The voice that broke the silence. The voice that broke the silence. And I want you to consider God's voice. Not only in the history of all of mankind, but in your history as well. I went to the book of Genesis and the creation story. The writer says that the Spirit of God was brooding over the face of the water. And then the voice of God spoke. Oh, hallelujah. First, he spoke light into the darkness. Yes. And then he spoke order out of came up. Light in the darkness, order out of chaos. Then I looked at Moses, struggling with his identity in the wilderness desert. And how again God shows up. Ain't it interesting how God shows up in some of the strangest places of our lives? We are told that he spoke to Moses out of the burning bush. And he told him that he was about to put on him the leadership, or I should say the excellence, 
of leadership to bring a people out of bondage. Yeah. Are you following with that was this morning? Amen. And then I looked at Elijah the prophet who in one of the greatest moments when he was successful and victorious ran away and fell because there were his enemies who sought to take his life and he read and he hid from God. But out of that hiding, God speaks to him the stillness of hope. He asks him the question, what are you doing here, Elijah? Yes. God spoke in the silence. Amen. And then I look at Jonah. When God spoke to him, and he told him that he was about to put on him the ability to go and speak to our people about repentance, to call them back from the brink of destruction that they have placed themselves in. Then I looked at my brother Abraham, one of the greatest patriarchs of the Old Testament. And he said to Abraham, I am going to give you the hope of a new generation because he was calling him to make a sacrifice. Has God ever called on you to make a sacrifice? He said, I want you to sacrifice your only son, Isaac. Get up! Isn't that a hard thing when I've already said to you that I was going to make you the father of uh, uh, many nations? Then we could go on and on. Even when you come to the New Testament, we see Jesus the Son rising out of the River Jordan. And the writers recall that there was a voice that came from heaven. Oh, hallelujah this morning. The voice of God saying, this is my loved son in whom I am well pleased. God speaks to us to the waters of our baptism. And then there's the Mount of Transfiguration. Sometimes, our mountain talk experiences prepare us for what lies ahead. And so the same voice that spoke to Jesus at his baptism is about to speak again yes. in a town. Yes. And he repeats the word at the baptism, but then he adds a favorite part. He says, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased, but listen to him. Yeah. Hear what he has to say to you. Because when the voice of God speaks to us, through Jesus Christ, his son, in this modern era, he needs to break the silence of our heart. Sometimes he needs to break in through the chaotic nature of our life. Sometimes he has to break in through a COVID darkness that is permeating the world at this time. Sometimes God needs to break in and we need to hear his voice through the darkness of sickness and disease in our lives. Yes. Sometimes we, he has to break in. Even when we are at the bank of the Jordan River and we are about to face death, God speaks to 
the Sabbath. Oh, yes. But listen to me this morning. There is no other greater moment, no more impacting time in the history of mankind than when God eloquently speaks to us through the power of his resurrection. Amen. You see, even though Jesus Christ was a miracle worker, and the New Testament records the many instances where he has raised individuals from the grave, he could not raise himself. The apostle, the apostle St. Paul said that God raised Jesus up through the power of his Holy Spirit. Amen. So what am I saying to you? God speaks in the silence of the grave. Let me say this. It says that suddenly there was an earthquake. Have God ever shook you up? <laughs> huh? yeah. Some years ago, I studied the concept of Jesus' resurrection. I studied what is an earthquake and what is the sickness shock that happens when an earthquake occurs. And I am told that scientists actually study the power of this earthquake that happened when Jesus, when God spoke true. The power of the resurrection to Christ, it was felt around the earth. No other time in the history of mankind it was felt around the earth. No other time did people hear God speaking so loudly, it was felt around the earth. And that is why we sing the songs that death could not hold him. The power of the grave could not hold him. Hell could not hold him. Bondage could not hold him. Whatever he was going through right there and then could not hold him, but God had a plan. And God was about to speak into existence New life, yes. new beginnings, yes. new hope. Yes. And that's what the resurrection is all about. So I'm asking you this morning, when is the last time that you have heard God speaking to you? Hmm? You see, sometimes we think that what we're going through is tragic. Yes. But it's just God speaking to us. His voice is calling us pay attention. His voice is calling us to say, I'm making a way out of nowhere. Yes, yes, yes. When we think that we we'll reach the roadblock, only God can move it. Yes. Only God can bring us through. Yes. Sometimes he may cause you to meander around. Sometimes he gives you the power to go through. Yes. But what he wants to happen in your life is for you to understand but I'm rolling away the storm. I'm going to go with you. I'm rolling away the storm. I'm bringing the thing to completion. I'm just going to change the force. Yes, See, yes. we can't move it, but he can. Yes. Woo! Amen. I remember my little story that I shared with you some time ago. And you know, sometimes we got to be able to move on the faith yeah. and let God <laughs> do what he is going to do. Yeah. And this story, you remember this? About Farmer Brown? And this, with this mighty boulder right in the middle of the field where he had the clock. He can fight with it. He can get around it. 
Father Brown was a child of God. So he set up a prayer to the man of death and said, I need this boulder to be moved. And every day, <laughs> he heard the voice saying, push against it. And he got up there every day, he did what the voice said. He pushed against it. And after two or three weeks, like we often do, when we believe that there's nothing happening and God is not moving, he got set up. So he got into his room and he fell on his knees and he started chastising God. Why you keep telling me to push against this and it ain't moving? And God said, go look in the mirror. And when he looked in the mirror at himself, he noticed that his physique had changed. He noticed that he had grown big and strong. He noticed that he had some muscles. He noticed like me, he got a six pack here. Because he got some eyes. And then the word of God said, look, I never said to you to move that boulder. I said to you to push. Because see, what I want us to understand today on this resurrection morning, that sometimes God may not give us the power to move something out of our life. But in the name of the Lord Jesus, he'll give you the power to go through it. Amen. I want you to remember that. He will give you the power to go through it. But there is a voice that I want you to hear. Because the book of Revelation says that on the last day, on the day of judgment, that God is going to speak again. Mm -hmm. And he is going to speak with the voice of a trumpet. <laughs> and Paul says that when that trumpet sounds, it says the dead in Christ right. shall rise. And the dead in Christ shall rise to a new hope, to a new life to a new relationship, mm -hmm. to a new understanding of who God is. But I don't want you to wait and see the merit or rest due, east due, east sunrise, or some other person who is in a mortuary business wheels you into the church, and we really want. What are you saying to me today, Father Double D? I'm saying to you that some of you are going through some stuff in your life. I'm saying to you that there's some struggle that you got. And every last one of us taking and battling with COVID-19. People have lost hope. People have given up. There's some people who have probably committed suicide at this time. People have lost loved ones when Uncle Frank died. Of with COVID-19 at age 90, we never saw him again. When they spent this we saw him months and months after that, he was in a little car. Some people have no ones that they will not be able to touch anymore. They have not seen that when they lay in death. Some people that this disease have died lonely and in hospital beds without even hearing the voice of a loved one at all. I am saying to you that these are troubled times oh, yes. that try our very soul, that try our very faith, but I have come by this morning to say to you that the voice of the Almighty is still calling. Yes, yes. The voice of the Almighty is still giving hope. The voice of the Almighty is still encouraging you. The voice of the Almighty is beckoning you to come, to be with him. Don't fail. 
He said, they can't go and tell the brethren that I am with them. Jesus is with you. Yes. His presence is with you. No matter what you're going through on the day, his presence is with you. Yes. He has promised, I will not forsake you. I will not leave you alone. You go through that fire, I'm the fire on it, the fire. You go through the flood, I'm going to throw a light grass with you because I am there. I want us to believe this. And I want us to sit in the silence of our soul. Be still and know that I am God. And as we are still, God comes. He sits with us and then he speaks to us in the silence. And as he does that, we have the peace of a new beginning. Amen. This is what the resurrection is all about. Every time you celebrate Easter, it is about the power of the voice that breaks through the silence and gives you hope in your moment of life. Yes. And so I pray that God will speak to you through the silence today that he will speak to you as you leave, that he will speak to you in the days ahead, and that no matter what you face, you will hear him speaking to you because he has called you to be his child. God bless you, and have a blessed and a happy Easter, my brothers and sisters. Your birth of life, your rule as an eye, O God, your God who gives us new life through the indwelling spirit of your Son, Jesus Christ, and who has given us power and authority over every demonic spirit, given us power and authority over the diseases of the earth, given us power and authority for healing, because you declare that whatever it is, that we are in your name. You said it shall be done according to your word. Yes. And so today we stand on the promises of Jesus Christ. We stand at the promise of the empty tomb and resurrection morning. Filled with hope, filled with joy, and filled with the promise of a new beginning. Touch right now, Heavenly Father, every member of this family. Bless them with your heavenly grace. Give them the fortitude of spirit to follow you, to hear your voice, to listen to that voice, and to walk where it leads them. Fill them, O oh God, with strength and might. Give them your power as you have declared in Isaiah that you shall give unto them. Let your peace be with them. Let them not be anxious, O oh God, about anything concerning David Augustus B. For we know that you have his power. Yes. And that his healing is being brought about even as we speak. In the name of Jesus, and that every yes. doctor, yes, every caregiver will be a witness to the power and the authority of God. And so we speak to his condition. We speak to the spot in his, his abdomen. We speak yes. to that spot in the body. The same body that Jesus in Psalm 1339 declared that even before he was formed, in his mother's womb, you knew that he was there. So speak to this body which you have created in your name. Allow the power of the blood of the transfusion of Jesus Christ to flow through that body right now, to bring healing and wholeness to it. Father, give him a fortitude of mind that he will never doubt you, but that he will always have faith in you. Give us faith to follow where you have led the way. So, Father God, I pray that you will knit 
this family together in strength, that he will remove their anxiety from them, that he will give them a fortitude of mind just to focus on you, on nothing else that is at hand. Because you lead us through every valley. You lead us through over every mountain. You lead us through the water of life. And you lead us to a quiet and tranquil place. And so we follow your God and your leading today. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Trust and pray. On this resurrection morning, with all of us, we prepare ourselves for that great day. For the great, great day of God God will come. For who shall be able to stop? May God bless you. May God keep you. This is my prayer. Amen. 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 Amen.